Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be diving deep into recursion and the call stack. This understanding recursion, understanding recalls, the call stack is essential for doing things like backtracking, depth first search, even dynamic programming. All of those concepts require you to understand recursion and require you to understand the call stack, especially top down dynamic programming. So this is a foundational thing and I realized I didn't cover it. So I'm gonna go really in depth on how recursion works and how the call stack works. And I'll show you a recursive algorithm and I'll literally trace it line by line and show how, yeah, pretty much how all the functions are called and then how it does the recursion. Pretty much I'll, I'll, I'll take the algorithm step by step and you'll get to see really in depth and get to really understand in depth the recursion and in depth how the call stack is working and that should help you build a mental model and sort of reason about your out your recursive algorithms and debug it later in the future when we build on top of that for more advanced topics so first off before we get into before we get into anything what is recursion a recursion is a function is basically when you call a function within itself so we have this function called dfs and then it's a recursive function because inside of that function, we make a call to ourself, to that function again. So basically it's calling DFS again, but on the left child here. So pretend, so the first call, we run DFS on the root. And then when we get to this line, we're gonna call DFS again, but on the left child. And then that left child is going to run DFS again on its left child. And you can see how that, how that is recursively taking us down this branch. And I'm going to execute, I'm going to show literally parse the code myself and act like a compiler and go through line by line on that. So what is the call stack? So I explained what recursion is. What is the call stack? Let, let's first explain what a stack is first in general. I have a whole video on what a stack is. I show you everything you need to know about a stack. And I also show how to implement a stack from scratch. But I'll quickly explain what a stack is right here. A uh, stack is a is LIFO, last in, first out. And the last in, first out data structure. And the easiest way to visualize a stack is through a stack of pancakes. Pretend we have a stack of pancakes on a plate. This is our plate. You add one, you, you add a pancake and then you add another pancake and then you add another pancake and it store, sort of stacks on top of each other. When you go to eat a pancake, the last pancake that, that went on top of the stack is the first one to come out. That's why we say last in first out. So we'd pop out that pancake. When we go to eat another pancake, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'd eat this pancake and that comes out. And then when, so so that what's what means like the last one that came in is the first one to come out. And then when we go to add pancakes, it gets put on top of the stack again, right? That That's what a stack data structure is. And what the call stack is specifically is it is what maintains, it, it tells us the, the, it be, it's basically a stack that represents the functions that are being executed right now. So pretend we had this, we had this code. I'll write this here. I'll revert this. Pretend we have our call stack here. We'll call it call stack. And then we had, we had this code. Pretend we ran this on node one, pretend this was execution one. This is the current function that's executing. So on top of the call stack, it, we have one. We're running DFS number one. The very top of the call stack is always the function that's currently executing. And then pretend like we're running this line by line. We run this line, we run this line. We go, we, we run this line, no dot left exists. So we run this line and then pretend 
we're calling DFS dot left on node number two. Now this now node number two is the one that gets put on the call stack and now we're executing it. And the reason we need a call stack is because when the fu when a function eventually returns, we need to under we need to know who called that function. And you'll see exactly how that looks like. I'm going to go through like a bigger example right here of how it all works. And yeah, and I'll also show how the call, I'll even populate the whole call stack. But let's talk about the problem that we're going to be solving. The problem that we're going to solve using recursion is we just want to do a depth first search. Do a depth first search on this tree and return return uh, return the nodes we visited return the nodes we visited in the order we visited them do, so we want to do a dfs on this tree and return the nodes we visited in the order we visit them and we we sort of want to visit them in this exact order one, two, four. We want to visit him this order. One, two, four, five, six, seven, and then finally go up. Three, eight, nine. You can see in this order we're prioritizing depth over breadth. We follow one the left all the way down till we reach a leaf. Then we finally backtrack. Then we we go down the right until we reach a branch, and then we backtrack. Then we go again. That's actually called a pre-order traversal, but it's it's. It's essentially just a variant of DFS, the most simple variant of DFS, where we just visit nodes as soon as we see them. But yeah, I'm gonna show how we can implement this using recursion. So the way we can implement this using a recur using recursion, so pretend this is the expected out output. One, two, four, five, seven, eight, nine. The the code to, to doing this pre-order traversal. It's pretty much as simple as this. First, we call the DFS on the root node and we pass in a global result and pretty much all of the nodes in the recursion or in the algorithm will just append to this list. So that, that's what this, this logic is doing. Every time we visit a node, we, we append its value into the result. And since it's a global list, all of them have the point, a pointer to the same list. They'll just it'll it will just append to this one global list and we'll eventually return that. Okay, so that's sort of the logic. As I mentioned, we, we first call it on the very root and the node is empty. So since since we call it called DFS, the first we 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 land here right away. And then let's say the call stack is running is running the DFS for function for node one. I'll signify it here. So we're on node one since we call DFS on the root of the tree. And if is the node none, the node is not none. So we go on to the next line and then we, uh, we see we result dot append. We let's store the result here. Since we're at node one, we just add one there. If the node dot left, node dot left exists. Yeah, it points to this guy. So we're actually going to perform recursion. We're gonna call we're gonna call DFS on the left child. So when we call DFS on the left child, it's gonna call DFS on node two. So it's actually gonna pop that into the stack, into the call stack. And now, now no, we're, we're performing DFS on node two because that's on the top of the call stack. So we're not gonna ac execute this right now. This is actually gonna get put on hold because we're, we're gonna be running this function. We're gonna be running this code. And this part of the code will only execute as soon as this finishes. But this will only finish, this code will only finish after this whole subtree is actually visited and you'll see that as I continue to execute this thing line by line. So we put we put two on the call stack. 
we follow we follow two right here and now we're calling dfs on node number two is node none is it null no it's not null because that is a node and then we append two here this would so we ran this and then we was we append two here we get here if node dot left node dot left it actually has it has a it does have a left child this is the point it has a pointer to a left child so we're, we're gonna run we're gonna run node dot left here so when we do node dot left we add four into the stack because we're calling dfs on node four now we actually we're actually and this pauses execution here because now four is executing this is this is the code this is the dfs function for four which is executing if node is none, node is not none, it's four, so so we continue. And then we add four here. And then now if node dot left node node dot left is, is actually none, so we don't need to run this code. We don't we, we don't run this. If node is right, node is right is not true because there's nothing there, so we don't run this. Then what we do is when we when we call return, what that does is it pops the last element out of the call stack right here. So when we call return, it top it pops the pop the top element from the call stack. And now how do we know what how, how do we know what function to continue executing after we return? Well, we just look at the top of the call stack. We need to start continue running where we were on number 2. And actually, when you, when you pop things into the call stack, you're popping, de you're you're adding details there. So when you get back, so when you like get back to it, you know exactly where to start off from. Because when now that two is at the top of the call stack, we need to continue executing two, and we don't want to start from scratch again. We need to start from, from where this is. So, yeah, we pretty much start. We continue from here. We should continue. Uh, con continue executing instructions from here but you can see now that we'll look at node.write node.write exists so we'll actually call node.write which is on node 5 here so node 5 gets on the call stack and then yeah we go to node 5 node is node 5 none no result.append we put 5 here we, that's what this does. If node dot left, node dot left, actually exists. So we're gonna we're gonna then call DFS on node dot left, which is actually six here. So you can see how this gets back onto the stack. Yeah, that gets back on the stack, and then now we're we're we called DFS on node six. That's what's being passed in here. Is node none? No. Node exists, so we continue. Now, result.append, the current node we're visiting, which is six. And then, if node.left, node.left doesn't exist, so we don't run this. If node.right, node.right doesn't exist, so we don't run, th run this. So then we hit return. What I said when we hit return is we pop an element from our call stack. right here and then who do we continue executing well we have to continue executing five where did we leave off well we left off right here if node dot right we left off here for five if node dot right right exists so we're gonna call dfs on the right child so it's gonna the right child is seven so that's gonna get put on the call stack now we're executing this right here. If node is none, set did like seven exists, so we continue here. Then then we add seven to the result, and you can see we're building up the result properly. We'll compare it to the expected value after. But now now we do node dot left. Node dot left doesn't exist, so we don't run this code. Node dot right doesn't exist, so we don't run this code. When we hit the return. We're gonna pop the top element off of the stack. Right here. 
and yeah now we're execute we have to continue executing from five at five we pretty much only need to run this line so since we after we run that line we pop this from the stack every time we return we have to pop something off the stack where do we go we go back to two you see we go back to two and then we hit return well, we, well what happens when we return well we pop something out of the stack and then finally we're back up into running this logic no dot right and then we start exploring here and you could see you could see how that how using just this code right here this recursive code takes us in sort of a depth first search manner where we explore the whole left branch and then we move on to the right and then we explore that branch is left like we pretty much explore it in that depth first pre-order manner that i mentioned like this and then finally we go to the right child i mean let's compare let's compare the result that we built out it's pretty it's pretty it's it's exactly the same up until we got to three right there and then you could see like do the rest of it for your own exercise but that's how the call stack and recursion works recursion is basically when you just call a function within a another function you call basically you just call it call the same function within that function and this is going to be used for backtracking dfs dynamic programming and you need to understand like how it pauses execution and then and then calls the next function and then it'll only start running the next li lines after that function that you called returns that part is very important so hopefully that all makes sense hopefully you get to you understand a lot more about what the call stack is how recursion works and yeah gonna get back into my series of dfs bfs and all the simple coding we're well, not simple i mean this this stuff is hard but like all of the coding patterns that are used most often in algorithm interviews hope you learned something i'll see y'all in the next video